All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Awakened Happiness Now Global Series. Thank you so much for being here with us today. If you are new to me, new to my show, new to my channel on YouTube, if you're watching later, please do subscribe so that you can take advantage of all the current shows, all the shows coming up, and all the previous shows. There's so many, I think 450 something um, to, to go back and listen to and learn from. It is my deepest wish, desire, and intention to bring forward these amazing speakers who are sharing their wisdom, their teachings, their experiences, their processes, their healings, their readings, et cetera, so that we can all thrive and so that we can all awaken to happiness now with ease and grace. <laughs> all right, so today we have a new speaker on the show. Lanaya Dow is here with us, and we're going to be talking about the art and magic of heart-centered conscious creation. So some of what we're going to talk about today and experience is uh, the embodiment of your true self, what that means, uh, heart-centered conscious creation, alignment with your higher self, what that means and what that can bring to our lives, living authentic, uh, authentically elevates others, and magic unfolds when you lead with your heart. Isn't that the truth? So we're going to talk about all of that and more, of course. And for those of you who don't know Lanaya, like I said, this is her first time on our show. And I think first time ever as a speaker on a telesummit show. So <laughs> so please bear with her a little bit. Be kind. Um, so a little bit about her. She is a, a teacher, a speaker. She's an upcoming author. She has developed her brand of techniques and processes to help others access creative genius and live joyfully from a sense of personal freedom in bringing together time-honored ancient wisdom traditions with modern tools. She has guided audiences and students to unprecedented levels of healing, creativity, and success in all areas while supporting them in raising their cellular vibrational frequency. Uniquely gifted with the ability to see and feel how emotions can stifle an individual, a team, or a company, she can draw a direct line to the results and help shift the trajectory for maximum performance, results, and flow. And of course, you know, that is what we all want. We want to be in flow. We want to be living our life to the fullest potential. So we're going to talk to Lanaya a little bit more about her journey as well. So um, everyone, please join me in welcoming Lanaya to the show with lots of love. <laughs> so Lanaya, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank glad you. you're here. Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> and I have, so I've, I've been on some shows, but I have not been on yours. And this is a special true. one, special reason. <laughs> it's the first time. Yes. Um, I just want to say really quickly before we start, in, it is uh, Halloween. So happy Halloween to all those who celebrate and have fun with it. Um, and it's also Diwali today. So happy Diwali to everyone. And um, for me, that it's really significant because this is a time where good overcomes evil. And it's about the light within, illuminating your entire soul, mind and heart so that you can live joyfully uh, and beautifully with uh, prosperity, abundance, flow, etc. So I wish that for all of you, that the light within expands uh, and illuminates your entire being so that you know how truly magnificent you are. All right. So, uh, Lanaya, since it is your first time on our show today, can you just um, share a little bit about your journey and how you became to be a healer, um, a coach, a light worker? Okay. Um, I came to be a healer, coach, and light worker because I worked in corporate America in, um, for a long time, for for twenty years and over twenty years, and. Um, in my position, I built global brands. So I worked on billion dollar businesses, million dollar businesses, but I really saw that no matter how, what level we attain that people could not get out of an ego state. And, um, and I knew I had attracted that to me because I had, you know, I clearly was there myself. And, um, and so it just, and I had um, gone through a lot of, what I perceived to be hardships in my life. And I really wanted to um, understand how I was creating what I created. And um, and so after, after my last foray into corporate or being there, I decided to go on a personal development journey. And so I started doing um, lots of things. And my journey took me to become a clinical hypnotherapist and to study all kinds of healing modalities. And um, and I started, you know, developing curriculums for, uh, for women and things of that nature. And so I just said, um, you know what, this is really the life that I want to have because 
it just kept coming up over and over and over again. I, when I would ask God, well, what am I supposed to be doing? And I kept hearing that you really got to focus on your spiritual self, the self be, before you do anything else. And I really thought that I had because I'd been in church all my life. And then I just had to realize that it wasn't about church. It was really about church within me. It was really about my own spirit and formulating and fostering that. And that's, um, that's how I came to be. Absolutely. And it is about the the inner work and the light within and realizing who we are. It's not, you know, I, yes, we create our, reality, our realities, but some things I think we are, are placed in our path from uh, source and or our higher selves so that we can learn something or we can experience something and grow and expand from that. So yes. I don't believe we we fully create every little minute detail of our lives, but I think there are some key key points in our lives that are definitely um meant to happen and so um and then how we react to those things i can i'll be honest i sometimes reacted not so well and other times i was like okay i got this i am good yes i got it but you know it's it's a journey right so spiritual growth awareness expansion is it's all a, a journey and we are all on the journey and continuing on the journey as we continue to do the inner work and learn who we are Right. So that's my little spiel on that. <laughs> yes. You, you'll find that sometimes I do go on little spiels or tangents just to give clarity um, for everyone. Okay. So um, <laughs> so today we are talking about the art and magic of heart centered conscious creation. And so conscious creation um, from the heart is where it's at. When we are trying to create from the mind, it does not work as well as we would like. And and I've noticed that from my own experience, right? So it is about heart-centered, but a lot of people, I'll be honest, sometimes myself, um, we think we're doing stuff from the heart, <laughs> but, you know, doesn't always work out that way. And, and then afterwards we realize, oh no, that was not really a heart-centered creation. That was more of a emotional uh, creation coming from fear or lack. Right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And and what I've seen is that um, even with epigenetics, you know, they say that um, the, you know, things that happen in families are passed down generation upon generation upon generation. So even post-traumatic stress is put, passed down to um, to individuals. And I feel like I was born with a certain amount of that. And depending upon, you know, everyone's belief systems and how we come into this incarnation, whatever um, things that that particular culture has gone through, then we often pull those things with us. And I have been definitely the recipient of that. I came in, I actually came in depressed. Um, you know, I had, yeah, I came in wanting to leave this earth when I was six years old. So I knew that I had brought in some things that were not, um, that were not even mine, right? Like, and then of course there was some things going on and all of those things contributed to my level of unhappiness, but to be so, um, to be so wise at such a young age to think, well, you know, I can just leave here. You know, I came in here, but I can leave here too. It's, you know, it's, is an interesting dynamic. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you shared that, you know, and because that is sometimes an honest truth that a lot of people don't want to share because, it, you know, it's like, um, but I have that for myself as well. I've always felt that since I was little, as far back as I can remember, like, why am I here? I don't want to be here. This is not my type of reality. This, what is this world? Who are these people? Like, how can people be like this? I don't want to be here. Why am I here? Exactly. <laughs> right? Constantly. And here. from a really early age, right? Really early age. And I remember I have, I don't know where it is now, but I have one baby picture of myself where I was somewhere between a year and a half to two years old where I'm smiling and they're like, you could see and feel the joy, right? And then after that, every other picture in me, that th there's no light there. There's no joy there. There's like, just just blankness or like a layer covering you know over me kind of thing right over that joy yes so it took me a long time to even say okay yes I'm willing to be here but but yeah. it didn't happen until much later and then until I was in my 50s I'm in my 50s now but like so 
<laughs> it hasn't been, you know, um, I hadn't accepted that I was here for a very long time. And I think that's something that people need to look at as well. It's like, are you truly accepting that you are here? And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a choice that we actually made to come here um, for a specific purpose and reason, right? Right, right. Absolutely. And and if we don't accept that we are here now, then it's hard to ground in those creations that we really want to be here because we're always, you know, teeter-tottering on this and that, which I was uh, teeter-tottering for a lot. I, I was teeter-tottering a lot. Um, and and so, you know, it feels really good to just be able to be grounded and say, okay, I'm here. It's just like when you move to a new house and you're like, huh, do I really like this? Okay, I like it. I'm checking it out. I feel like I'm going to be here for a while because I have even experienced walk-ins. Like I've ex literally mm -hmm. seen it and experienced it in myself because, you know, when you're, when you go through a lot of trauma, a lot of times you, you try to escape your body. So um, people like me and people who've undergone some of the things that I've gone through, we, seek to leave our bodies when something um, it, uh, bad is happening. You know, when we're a child, we don't know how to deal with it. We leave our bodies. And when we leave our bodies, it leaves the, our bodies open for other things to start occupying our space. So yeah, that did happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I know this is a subject that, that we, we don't normally talk about, but does this, who else does this resonate with? I'm, I'm sure there are more than just me and Lanaya who this resonates with. So Bobby's saying yes, her for sure, right? So if you want to type in the chat, just so that we can all feel like, you know what, we're not alone in this, right? And we're not the only ones and we're not crazy. <laughs> and that's the thing but that we always feel like, oh my God, I must be crazy. No, um, this is something that a lot of us do experience. And I'm not going to say it was like, because I'm a star seed, because we all are. So that. Just we'll just put that to the side. Okay, we all are. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, in in, in what I've learned, um, so no, we're not having a, dis a depressing conversation. Okay, so, so because this is Diwali, this is a celebration of light. So we have conquered the darkness, right, oh, yeah. within ourselves oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. to, to be where we are now. Absolutely, absolutely. There's nothing actually. There's really nothing sad about it because it's a journey, right? Like, um, it's it's a journey. You go on these this this journey where you're you come in the veil of forgetfulness you don't remember a lot of us don't remember some of us remember certain things and then other inputs come in that make us not remember and then when we get to the other side and we start remembering again it's just like coming home to your best yeah. friend to your favorite people so yeah this is not this is not a low <laughs> conversation this is a very exciting con I'm mean, so happy like really like literally like very extremely extremely happy and people who know you know who know me or have known me over time have been able to see a transition from where I was to even even it can look really good like on the outside like it could look really good like you can look really successful like you you make money you appear to have friends you appear to have nice things you appear to have all this stuff but you're not really um feeling very Whole on the inside and then when you come through this whole journey then you can fit that's what I really want to communicate what it is this awakening to happiness can be a journey for us but when we get to the other side so much more is waiting for us and then creating from this space of happiness like if you think I, I thought about all those different things that I was able to create from a space where I really didn't feel very happy but now kind of creating from a space of happiness things come so much more so much easier the manifestations mm -hmm. are easier the relationships are easier you know the thing is we're we're we are we're not um we are not communicating with each other we're communicating with each other's field so that is what is in all of our fields whatever is in all of our fields those things that the culture has downloaded to us the things that the collective has downloaded to us things that the the galactic beings have downloaded to us the things that have our parents our lineage have downloaded to us our soul lineage has downloaded to us so when you finally get to realize i am sovereign and free and divine i get to make my own decisions that opens you up to a whole nother realm of happiness yeah absolutely i love that that is and and being authentic and i just want to say um you know thank you to all of those of you who are typing in the chat i mean I know it takes a lot to be vulnerable and to share. So I, I just really want to commend you for sharing and, and acknowledge you for sharing. 
in, in the chat. So thank you. It really means a lot to me that you are able to feel safe here to, you know, share something about yourself that, you know, a lot of times we don't share with other people. But I'll be honest. I, I am not a sharer uh, in private, like with people, like, you know, but uh, with you all, I seem to have no issues, no problem. Sharing, right. So I really appreciate that. Um, but yes, it is about, you know, awakening to the light within, awakening to who you are within and creating from that space, right? And even even still, like on the journey, we're still going to have things come up. Things are always going to come up, right? But it's how we respond to them and how we react to them that matters. Yes. So let's uh, also talk a little bit about conscious creation. <laughs> what does that exactly mean? Because uh you know i i think i create consciously all the time but <laughs> sometimes those conscious creations don't pan out don't work out and i'm like what is going on here and then other things are consciously created by my belief system i totally get that right yes yes absolutely so um in in my estimation the way that i interpret conscious creation is actually being in my heart and creating from my heart, knowing what it is that my intentions are um, and understanding that creating from that space. Like there's a 3D business model, there's a 5D business model and there's a 3D model, a, five, a 5D model. So so excuse me if I lapse back, uh, back and forth because I am a recovering corporate person. And so sometimes my conversation kind of laps back and lapses back and forth. So bear with me, but um so creating creating now means that I literally get to be in my heart space, making sure that those people who are for me, I'm attracting them from a heart space. I'm not attracting them from a, um, a fear space. Um, there's no fear when I'm attracting them. I realize that there's more than enough for everyone. So I'm consciously creating whatever I'm doing. If something is, is, is for me, it's for me. If something is for Lansing, I'd send it to Lansing. If, if something is for Amanda, I send it to Amanda. It's all good because everything comes back because in reality, we're all one anyway. So knowing that we're all all one. And if one person is harmed in the whole organism, then all of us are harmed. But if one of us is helped in the organism, then all of us is helped. So we don't have to worry about this and that because everything is going to come back for us. The people who are for us are for us. And maybe, maybe the person is not for me right now, but maybe they need to see Amanda first. And then they come and then they go see Lansing and then they see me or whatever it is in, in whatever the situation is. I'm just giving a for example. So consciously mm -hmm. I am creating from a heart-based place. There's no, I want to create and I want to sit down and create when I'm not feeling stressed. I know that the energy that I put into my creation is the energy that's going to be felt. If I go to a restaurant and the person there has, um, kind of an attitude, I can choose, do I want to be here and transmute this? Or do I just want to go to someplace else where the energy is going to be better for my food? Because I have actually left restaurants before, because I feel that now energy is everything. Everything is mm -hmm. energy. And everything is spiritual. And so when we consciously are raising our vibration to the highest vibration that we can attain, acquire, sustain, then those things that we bring in are going to be a better fit for us. So when I was in that vibration of constant fear and stress and scarcity, then I would bring more of that same thing. It was just like a magnet. I would just bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. But then when I got to see that, you know what? The, the world is so big. What am I doing? And I am divine, sovereign, and free. I can bring in anything. Then I went back to that place where I used to be, where I say it, and it's going to manifest. Because manifesting from that place is consciousness. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Oh, I love that. That's so powerful. Yes, absolutely. And, and you know, just to Tanya's point in the chat, she's like, we create every second. Absolutely. Are we mindful all the time? No. And so this is about creating mindfully, but also creating based on the energy, your energy and frequency, right? So as you were saying, Lanaya, it's like, what energy frequency are you running at that time when you're focused on creation or even just living your life, period, right? Because our energy is always interacting with other people all the time and um, 
uh, uh, affecting them as well, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, you know, in living in this reality, it's not easy to always, you know, have that high vibe. We're going to go in and out throughout the day, right? But the more that we can focus on maintaining that higher vibrational state, the easier it will become and the more that we'll be able to hold it, right? Absolutely. And and I just say, why not practice it every day? I mean, you know what? It, it said in the Bible, I remember reading, you must pray all day without ceasing. And I, and I thought when I was a kid, I was like, well, that is just too much work. Who has time to pray all day? Who can do that? However, everything is a prayer. We're a living, walking prayer. If we get up in the morning and we bless our water, with intentions of love and well-being and peace and happiness and joy, like Dr. Emoto said. And then we do our meditation and we fill our body and our field with as much positive, powerful energy as we can. And then we envision our day and how we want it to be and who we want to affect and how we want it to end. And then when we go through our day and we're not just mindlessly driving and being a clinical hypnotherapist, I know how it is to be um, uh, hypnotized because I know how it is when I when I drive somewhere and I'm like, how did I even get here? I was not paying attention at all. So, but starting to be more mindful, eating mindfully, eating foods that actually resonate with your body or with our bodies, and then talking to people and looking them in the eye and then sending them, you know, sending them some love, some heart connection. And then, you know, if we're working out or whatever we're doing at the end of the day, taking care of our families or whatever, like literally covering that and then praying over our food and being in gratitude. And then before bed, like literally, um, you know, thanking God for the things that happened and, or, or the universe or whatever you want to call it, whatever is, you know, the God of your understanding, but just being in that place, then we are the embodiment of a prayer and we're living it all the time every day. So it's, it's so different now. Like I have completely switched up the way that I thought it had to be to the way that it could be now. I thought it was taking something from me before if I prayed every day. I thought it was invasive and I thought it was, and I also thought it was like someone way out there um, who was going to do something for me instead of understanding that we are the arms and legs of God. We are the embodiment of God on this earth and God is having all of these experiences through every single being. So whomever I'm interacting with, they are experiencing God and I'm experiencing God when I'm talking through them. And as well as we have this being that has created all of this beautiful, all these beautiful things. And when I go into nature, a lot of times I get misty or teary-eyed because I think, oh my goodness, how great is God for creating the sun, the moon, the stars, and this beautiful greenery that I get to enjoy and the oxygen that is going in our bodies. So we are the wow. environment of prayer every day. That is that is so powerful. So if you want, if you want to know how to consciously create, go back and listen to that. That was amazing. That was phenomenal. And, you know, like some people may not like the name God, use whatever word works for you. God, God is universe, spirit, creator, source, whatever works, right? Yes. Um, energy, whatever works for you. Okay. But that was powerful. That was, I'm like, like, wow, beautiful. I love that. Thank you. That is, thank you. That is it. That is how you do it. <laughs> right. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm like, I have no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> we still have an, an hour left but i have no more questions <laughs> if that makes sense yeah i mean what else can we say you know apart from that and so what happens though like okay yes all of that was great now it's to put it into practice but what happens is our mind gets in the way our stories get in the way right we get so many distractions and then we get put off the path you know uh, yeah. literally and then then we're like stumbling and we're like what happened and I was doing great and like where did it all go wrong right and so that's yeah. why you you need to have a consistent daily practice yes yes so so in terms of a consistent daily practice I actually do most of those things every day um and other than when I'm, if I'm so tired and I fall asleep, sometimes I have to wake up and do them, but I can get into a, you know, like if I'm up at 4.30 and you get up at whatever time you want to get up, but if I'm up at 4.30, then I can easily, if I'm start, I start meditating, I could easily go through 
go through six something and then the dog has to go out and I'm just like, oh my God, I have to do it. Now, of course, for for my my friends who have um who have children, then you know, you gotta work in the meditation if that's what they choose to do whenever they choose to do it. But there's all kinds of ways to do meditation. Can't do it while we're driving, but we can do it if we're, you know, maybe in a line waiting for something, or if we're walking, we can do it, or you know, different different things of that nature. So I feel that now if we if we just think about other opportunities to fit something else in because for me I used to be on the phone gabbing with somebody all the time like literally that was my time to do it and spending time with myself um having to go into myself it's created a deeper relationship with myself so such that I can actually trust because before I just I went from here to there to here there to here to there to here to there and there was no uh, real relationship with myself. I thought that self-care was like getting my hair done and my nails done yeah. and stuff and facials. That that's, that's basically the extent of it. But if we look at it and we shift our understanding of it to self-care being that we're taking care of every aspect of our being and it's not hard because when we take care of this, other people and our other people around us actually benefit because the more we love on ourselves, the more imminent, the more love emanates to our pets, to our people, um, to our business associates, to, um, you know, to other people when we go out and they will notice it. And they, they don't necessarily know why they feel the way that they do, but, um, um, but one of my mentors, my Angelo said, people will never, they may not remember what you said, but they will remember the way you feel, the way that you made them feel. And so if you're walking up on someone and your energy is feeling really good because you have done your own um, energetic detox, then that's going to benefit them, which benefits the whole organism. I love that. And it is, uh, it, it is about that, you know, because our energy interacts with another's energy way before we even get there physically, right? So uh, it is about what is our vibration frequency? Are we still in calm? Or are we frenetic and frantic, right? And, you know, I just want to bust this myth about meditation. <laughs> um, I meditate. Yes, but I enjoy sitting down, cross-legged, eyes closed. That's how I meditate. That's how I like to do it. But meditation does not have to be sitting down. It's just basically taking a um, taking a deep breath, being present, being aware, right? And the more that you can do that on a regular basis, you'll find that that is also a form of meditation that is easier for you to do. It's about being present, basically. Not grounding, because I know how much we all hate that word, but being present. And present means not thinking, not being in your mind, but just being in your heart, being in your body, being aware. That's all. If you just do that a couple of times a day during the day, you will start to notice more about yourself. You'll start to become more aware of who you are and your energy and your energy field. Yes. At the same time. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it, meditation is not this big, scary thing that you have to be scared about or anything, but I like to meditate. That's just, you know, how I was brought up and how, you know, all that stuff, but you don't have to. Just yeah. the but if and just accept yourself. You know, love is hard. Uh, for those of us who have, uh, let's say, wounds and betrayal and all that wonderful stuff, love the word love can become you know polluted. So just mm -hmm. accept. Just be an allowance of someone. Accept the person as they are. Accept yourself as you are. You know, I always say start with acceptance. You'll you'll fall into love as you move forward. Just at least start with acceptance. Yes. Yes. And sometimes in Shafali, I'm going to say that I had a gentleman do some music for me and he just kept saying, you just need to accept yourself. You just need to accept yourself. And I kept saying, what are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? I'm not accepting myself. I could not, I could not rationalize what he meant by that. Like I kept, I mean, of course you understand the words, right? I mean, you're an mm -hmm. attorney, you understand when someone says, accept yourself. But the whole thing is that if we don't allow ourselves to see that we are shadow and light and that sometimes things are not going to be perfect and most of the time they're not, 
Um, because I grew up in a household where, you know, my father was a minister, my mother was a minister's wife until she became a minister. So everything had to look perfect. So if you, if you showed any signs of anything that didn't look like happiness, then that was ground for corporal punishment. I mean, literally corporal punishment. So I grew up having a mask on, pretending that I was happy. I remember going downstairs in the basement, screaming to a pillow. Now this is not sad because this is something that I knew instinctively to do to keep my head on straight. So what I'm saying is we that can set somebody up for imposter, for an imposter syndrome to be inside that. So then when we mature and then when we start really waking up, we can see that, oh, okay, I now I know why I did that. So since I did that that way, I don't have to do that anymore. And you know what? People who I come in contact with, they don't have to do that either. So it's a victory over the past because now my nieces and my nephews don't have to go through that because I went through it. And my friend's children don't have to go through it. And, 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 and then because even when I'm speaking, when we all speak, there are codes that are coming out and coming all around. They don't have to go through it. They can experience something different because we are responsible for ourselves. And if we take responsibility for the person that we're communicating with and the next four people that that person communicates with, then we will take more care in that communication. And being that way, we're like, oh my gosh, oh my goodness. I, when I when I speak with Shafali, I'm speaking with a reverence and I'm thinking about what I'm saying. And even if I'm going fast, I still have a certain intention in my heart and she will she will feel that intention. And I'm I'm calm, I'm respectful. I mean, even if I'm not calm and I'm I am a highly excitable person, I'm a Sagittarius, so that comes with the, the you know, with that comes <laughs> that comes with me. But 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 just being responsible for that and understanding that actions and thoughts, um, you know, go out into the field and then knowing about that, that just really is so beneficial to me now. I mean, just, you know, the victory over the past is really Absolutely. Absolutely. And we we can all do that. You know, we all have over our in our journey uh, on this path have had victory over our childhood what we experienced in the past etc now yes. one of the th one of the key points i wanted to talk about as well was about um your alignment with your higher self and how that can begin to uh, change your whole you know trajectory of your life when you start to become more in alignment with your higher self connected with your higher self right yes yes so okay so <laughs> Connecting. Okay. Now I'm, I'm feeling kind of emotional about this. Like the, uh, because just the other day I heard, I heard, I heard my body say, and I heard my soul, my higher self say, say, um, my soul is back. Like literally I woke up that morning. I was like, oh, my soul is back. It was just, it was a knowing. It's like my soul came back. So what did I have to do to allow my soul to come back, which is really a reunion, a marriage with my higher self, um, which I've been doing a lot of work, a lot of work to, to, and, it, and everybody's path is different. So everyone doesn't, doesn't have to do a lot of work. Some people just decide and it just happens. Some people just envision it and it happens. For me, it was, um, um, it, it's a calling because my calling is to work with people and to help people and to get to another level, to let them see miracles in and of themselves. And so, I got to go on a journey where I literally got to um, see what had happened in the past for me to reconcile with it, to really come to peace with it, to terms with it, not just say, okay, I've forgiven it and, you know, I've forgiven her and blah, 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 but really to actually feel it and embody that. And I'm very proud and happy to say that I really got a chance to do that. And so that merging with my higher self and literally, Shafali, I felt that I had grown two inches taller. Like literally, I felt two inches taller off the ground. And things started coming to me. Things started um, manifesting. Even, I mean, even, that just happened like a few days ago. And I literally felt 
so much better about everything and a happiness and a joy started coming back. And I started feeling that. And not that it hasn't been coming back before. It's been coming back slowly because I've been doing different things and I've been working on myself and I've been working with people and, and things of that nature. And so stuff has been coming up, but now it's just a reunion with that higher self that just feels so um. I mean, just so amazing. And I just can't tell you all the miracles that are happening because of it. Did I answer your question? Beautiful. I think so. And basically, you know, when you are in connection with or in alignment with your higher self, your your perspective on yourself and your life and those around you also changes and your reality also changes. And at the same time, it's like you you know that you're here for a purpose. You're here for a reason. And, and you are never, never, never alone. You're always supported. And I think for me, that was the biggest thing because I didn't have that physical support that I wanted and needed, but I always had that support from my guides and my higher self source, God creator. But when you actually experience it, it's, uh, it, it, it's not really something you can describe. It's it is something you have to experience. Um, which may sound like a cop out in trying to describe it, but it's it it's there's, there's a fullness in your being, and there's like a um, an opening in your heart, of course, etc. But there's like a peace that comes within, and that connection you know has always been and always has been. And then you go back and you can see all those times, and this makes me cry all the time. But all those times when. Oh, when you thought you were all alone, you know, in your deepest, uh, despairest <laughs> moments, and you realize you were not alone, you were being held in those moments by source, God, creator, by your higher self. Um, and so that awareness and that realization that comes to you, it just, it still always makes me cry. But, um, but that for me was the biggest thing, right? So then yeah. it's like, whether I have the support here in the physical or not anymore, it doesn't matter. Yes. Right. And I don't even need it anymore. Uh, yeah. You know, when I, because it's like, well, I'm good. <laughs> but I, you know, and it's not like I don't need anybody. It's a, it's it's not a require. It's not, I'm not lacking anything now. Yeah. You know, that lack energy is not there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it it totally makes it totally makes sense. Yes, because I I went through this phase this phase where I was like, oh my goodness, I've gone spiritual and I lost like 90% of my friends because I've gone spiritual, right? And no one understands me anymore because they're like, what are you talking about? Like, where? and and the things I wanted to talk about like completely changed. And then now it's like, ah, okay, you know what? Friends are there. And then I, I lost confidence. I was like, am I, will I be able to make friends again? Like, it's like, I don't even know, right? But it's like, after after, you know, like going through this journey, it's like, you know what? I have friends and I have people also who want to talk about those things that that really light me up too and and I'm still even if even if I am by myself that doesn't mean that I'm lonely it just means that I'm temporarily alone right and 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 I talk to so many great people who are on this journey too. And I light up when they get their own knowing of something, right? Like, because no one can give, I, I can tell somebody, like I can tell a client, oh, you just had this or you had that. But most of the time they don't really get it. They don't believe me. I, I'm, I'm excited about it. And I then I try to hold back some of that excitement because I'm extremely excitable. But when they get it for themselves, like when they really get that knowing and it clicks in, it's like a whole new world opens up for them. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. It's like, you know, like Lansing says, you've got your soul family, right? And and the thing is, once you start to connect with your higher self, being in alignment with your higher self, source, God, creator, you start to recognize who is your soul family, right? It's not everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tell you that it's not everyone, right? But everybody is here um, in your life for a reason. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and actually, I take that back. Yes. The, those people that are closest to you, even though you may have issues with them, they are part of your soul family. They're just playing out a certain role for you to experience and learn and know something. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll take that back. Yeah. They're, they're like, no, that's not true. It's like, okay. 
<laughs> well, because because what they say, Shafali, is that we come into the world with about 500 people who we're going to navigate the world with at some point in time, right? And then, yeah. but out of that 500, there's going to be 50 of them who we've had other experiences with where we've been really close or, you know, we've had closer relationships with them, mother, daughter, father, child, whatever experiences, right? And so really, we are thankful, like my, you know, my consciousness shifted from being angry with somebody because I had, because I felt like I had to go through this to thanking them for the fact that, you know what, that was probably a difficult choice to be, to have to be a certain way in order for me to wake up. But I was so stubborn. Had they not been like that, I wouldn't have woken up. Right. So my yeah. consciousness had to shift to the point where, okay, um, I, you know, I have to forgive them. I have to forgive. I have to forgive to, well, really it's not even necessary to forgive because I contracted for this experience. And since I contracted for this experience, then if anybody needs to be forgiven, it's not them, it's me. And then, so let me just forgive myself and keep it moving. Oh, I love that. Cause I, I totally agree. And, and I'm of the mindset as well that, you know, all the people in my life, uh, you know, who were difficult or who, <laughs> uh you know i had different difficult experiences with i don't regret it one bit because they've brought me to where i am now with all the blessings that i've had so yeah. they they did, did they did me a favor even though like there's still sometimes i'm like i don't know you know it could have been a little bit different but you know it is what it is right it, right. it was what was required for that catalyst like they were the catalyst to uh for my awakening right for my yeah. expansion etc and for my heart to, you know, break wide open, even if even if there were like so much pain, etc. But it's it will it was what was required because I'm, I guess, stubborn as well, right? <laughs> so it's um, you know, that's why no regrets. I don't blame anybody. I, I I have no hard feelings towards anybody because they were all there in service of me and for me so that I could wake up. Yes, exactly. That's exactly how I feel. They were in service for me to wake up. And had they not been there, had it I... It would have been somebody else. <laughs> That's what like... I think. It would have been somebody else because the awakening had to happen. Yeah. In some way, right? So yeah. I love... I'm, I'm loving this conversation too. It's, I mean, people are saying in the chat how much are resonating with this, how much are loving this conversation. And I, I'm me too. And it's like, we're like so off topic and everything, but it's like, it doesn't matter. It's like... <laughs> I don't it, like this is so important and so key and it's like this is this is kind of like you know we're all having that conversation with our soul tribe with our friends with you know not the you know friends who are like family yes right kind of thing that yeah. we can share and we can talk and we can experience and we can say yes and we can say or or you can say mm, not so not so sure but right. uh, at least you know these these this conversation is something that um is hopefully opening up something within you to recognize about yourself right and so that's what it's about recognizing yes. who you are and uh, and having this relate to the experiences that you've had up until now as well yes this absolutely. is the conversation that was meant to happen <laughs> yeah exactly it was yeah because <laughs> i had no idea what we we're gonna i mean i knew what, what we we're gonna talk about but who knows right yes. um i i also you know like living authentically is is key and so like when as some of you know, when when I do these shows, you know, I am totally open, vulnerable, authentic. You all saw me before I went live and everything, right, as well. But, you know, like, I don't know how to be a different way with when I'm talking to my soul tribe. But when I'm with, um, when I'm not talking to all of you and I'm in my other life, I'm going to say, I'm very quiet. I'm very shy. I'm very reserved. Like, I don't share anything with anybody uh, unless somebody asks me something, right? So it's it's kind of like I have uh, two different personas, I suppose, but this is the one I like the best. <laughs> this is the one that is the most fun. Um, but this is where I, I feel I am most authentic. In the other areas, I feel like I'm like superficial, right? Because those people are not the ones that talk about this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. So I just keep it superficial. Hi, hello, how are you? Kind of thing and leave it at that. But yeah. when you can truly be just you yourself authentically, it's so freeing, right? It's so freeing. And you and it's like, I'm never thinking about what do I have to say? What do I want to say? How do I say that? Never. It just comes out. Yes. <laughs> so yes. Part of yes. it is, of course, I'm always channeling when I'm on these shows as well. But at the same time, 
when I'm channeling, well, you know, usually uh, it's my higher self, right? So that's me, yes. right? So being connected to your higher self is about you being authentically you yes. more and more. Yes, it's definitely about you. Yes, it's def definitely, definitely, definitely that. Like that, I I just, I, um, when, before, when I would get into business mode, I felt a whole different persona coming up, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, this doesn't feel, it's like my higher self is like, I have no room to step in there. And then just being able to recently really integrate it, it's not like I have to be like, oh, this is me when I'm doing it. And I, I can even hear my voice, how my voice changes in it. And I've even said to people, okay, I'm gonna be, I'm, you're not used to me being like this, I know, cause you're used to me being this way. But to do this, I need to be this way. And so now, and this is making me emotional, to be able to just integrate that and not feel sorry or sad about it because people are not going to understand me or they're not going to, because, you know, in my home, being smart was currency. And so if you weren't, nothing else mattered other than being smart. And if you weren't smart, then basically you're just you're out the door here. That's what it felt like. Right. So like I built my hat on that and I would, you know, pull myself up by, because I always had that in the background. And so that even would occur if there was an insult or somebody tried to say something that I always knew in my back pocket, I could pull out that, I could pull out that smart. But now it's like, I can literally channel my work and everything everything is coming so much easier and better and quicker and faster. And it's, it's, it's a give and take now. And I don't have to put on that imposter um, superwoman um, outfit. I can be my full self integrated and, and it's such, and it's a better result. So now when the things come and the things I touch turn to gold, it's like real. It's not like, because of this persona that I've created over here, which was good sometimes and not good all the time, not, not good other times. Now it's like good all the time. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Does that make sense to yep. you? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And as Lansing said, the rise of the divine feminine. Yes. And you know, and that's, that's another key uh, point about this, this change that's happening within a lot of us. And I know most of us on this call are women so we are the divine feminine and we are choosing to be in our sovereignty and choose to be in our power and just choose to be from the heart, right? And work from the heart, create from the heart and create from that uh, and just that energy of creation, which is the energy of the divine feminine, allowing that to flow through us so that we can make our lives be more of what we want, right? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So that is all that is all possible. Right. And when when you do that, when you just allow the flow, that's when the magic also unfolds. It starts from the heart. It starts from working. Uh, now, I, I don't like to use the word. I'll be, I'll be honest. I don't like to say working with the divine feminine because we are that. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's just honoring that creative energy principle within you and allowing that to flow, right? Not just always thinking, but allowing the energies to flow through you, connecting to the energies of creation, the energies of the of nature, of the universe, and allowing that to flow through you as you choose to create whatever it is that you want, right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. This is a, this is the time for that, right? Like, so I don't, I, I don't denigrate anything with the patriarchy um, that served its purpose, right? But it's just bringing us back into an alignment and even alignment inside because we have divine feminine and divine masculine inside. And depending upon how we've had to, um, how we've had to navigate the world, we could have been acting out more of our masculine side versus our feminine side, or we could have been acting out more of our feminine side versus our masculine side. So really what I say is as the divine feminine is coming back, it's allowing us to go back into balance, a balanced state so that, so that we can, I mean, and, and it's exhibited right now by millennials, right? They're like, uh, you know, professor T I, I'm not, um, I quit that job. I was like, didn't you just get that job three months ago? Yeah, but I didn't like it. And I mean, so they're like, they're like, the millennials are like, 
I'm not going to stay on this job if I don't want to stay on this job. I don't have to do that. They are really acting out that divine masculine and divine feminine that some of us are, are still working to have, right? Because working really, really long hours or having to be the head of the family and take care of all these things or, or having to be the, the caregiver for multiple people, right? It's like a lot of times we put on that divine masculine side and it's, and, and, and and with this rise of the divine feminine, it's just giving us an opportunity just to be able to be back in balance so that we can slip back into our into ourselves and just feel, okay, I have both sides and I bring them out and I've integrated them as I as I'm walking on this plane. Do you mm, get what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. And and you know, the, the divine masculine is all about the doing, right? But the divine feminine is about the feeling and the and the intuition and what feels right for you, what works for you, right? Tapping into the energies um of of what is working for you. That's why when you say, you know, they say, No, I don't like it, it doesn't work for me. I used to use the phrase, this doesn't work for me. So what does that mean? I don't like it, period. <laughs> right. I don't, you know, I like I don't like how I feel when I'm doing it, or I don't like whatever happens to be, but trusting that and honoring that. And that also includes the body, right? Trusting the messages that your body is giving you all the time, right? As well. And, yes. um, and listening. So I think a lot of the, for the divine feminine aspects within it, it is about listening to ourselves. Yes, absolutely. Because our body keeps the score and our body, you know, like I've had some, I mentioned some of the health challenges, but it was just simply because I was doing things and my body was like rebelling, like, we're not going for this. Like, if you're not listening to me, then I'm going to show you who's going to win, right? And you can't win when it's you versus your body, right? You need your body to be able to do yeah, things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You need your body in order to create, for sure. Absolutely. You, you cannot create from the upper realms. It won't work, you know? It, 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 we are in, the, in, this, in this reality where we need the body, the physicality in order to create. That is why we are here. We choose to be here. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say really quickly, so I know we're going to be doing some other things as well. Are you going to, are you going to be taking us through uh, a process like a, yes. like a guided meditation as well, right? Yes. I was going to take you through a guided meditation and then I see some questions and then I would answer, should I answer the questions first or go through the guided meditation? First? Yeah, let's, let's do those questions first. Then I'm going to, then I'm going to talk about the packages and then we'll do the guided meditation. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, so Bobby, I think, had a question. Bobby, you want to unmute? Yes, my question is, um, I've always had to be in the masculine and take care of everybody. And I ended up losing my eyesight and I'm alone because other people aren't ascending. And they expected me to just be bulletproof and continue and... You know, I live in a really rural area and there's nothing here. Okay. So creating from a place where my superpower before was my eyesight. Okay. I three jobs and going to school, raising my kids, traveling, taking care of, you know, both my parents as they, they died and my brother and my dog. And I mean, everything just blew up and I have people that because I'm not believing it in their particular religion anymore they're like oh we can't talk anymore and I'm like well that's okay because mm -hmm. <laughs> I would have been you 10 years ago okay okay so let me ask you this Bobby what is it if anything that you don't want to see Drop into your heart, ask, answer it. I, your I don't think it's something that I don't want to see. Okay. I can't see how to overcome it because I don't have help. Ah, uh, you don't have help. Okay. So like I asked my siblings to check on me huh? and they don't, you know, I know they're a couple hundred miles away. I asked my kids to check on me and they don't. Um, And I'm like, well, you know, I don't, I just can't see a way through before I just was, I had a bandwidth that just, you know, I was just on all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
Um, so work with me here. So if you were, and what I heard you say is you can't see a way through, right? You can't see a way through and you're, and the issue is eyesight, right? Okay. All right. Which means I can't drive. I can't go to the grocery store. I can't, I can't see you. I see colors. Okay. 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 So you can't see a way through. Okay. So I want you to just, um, okay. So, so, so sometimes we have a lot of stuff that we pick up, right? Like we, we start taking care of people and then um, there's, a, there's some feelings that may come up because we're taking care of everybody else. And then we feel like we're asking somebody to help us. And instead of helping us, instead of helping us the way that we want to be helped, they don't want to do it that way. They want to do it the way that they want to do it, or maybe not at all. Does that feel... Does that feel like something that's coming yeah, up? Yeah, it's like they don't believe me. It's like they still think I'm the person I was seven years ago before I lost my eyesight. And they're like, you know, my, like my little daughter, and pardon the language, she goes, just fucking get over it and get a job, you know? And I'm like, oh, girlfriend. <laughs> wow. Okay. What you know, you my brother goes, you've always been the powerful, successful one. And, you know, we grew up in a really harsh environment. I got two brothers and a sister. My two brothers in their 60s are still homeless unless a woman provides for them. Okay. And my sister is just terrified of life. And she's okay. like, I don't think we can talk anymore. We don't think the same. I said, well, that's what I think makes it amazing, you know, is that we're different. We can grow together. Okay. So let me ask you this. I want you to just drop into your heart. Can you close your eyes for a moment? Or, and I want you to just drop into your heart only to take the distraction away from seeing colors. I want you to drop into your heart. And I want you to tell me what is the best case scenario in this situation with you and your family and support? What would be, what's the best case scenario? With my family, none. Okay. What's the best case scenario with anyone? I don't have anybody else. I've always taken care of people. And now that I don't, they all left. Okay. So listen, listen to me. What, what would you like to see happen? Put away anything that you think about something not happening, somebody not doing things. There's something that you want. So there's definitely something that you want. What would be the best case scenario? Whether I want my health back. You want your health back. Yeah. Because- when I was healthy and able to take care of people, I was very pleased to do so. Okay. But now I sit in a house for seven years. Okay. And I'm not good at convalescing. Okay. <laughs> so you've been sitting in the house for seven years. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. All right. So um, um, so when we go through this process, I'm going to go through something uh, specific for you inside this process. Would that be Okay. That's great. Go through the process for everyone, but I'm going to go through something specific for you and specific for Tanya. Okay. So if we can just hold it for one second. Okay. And then we're, I'm going to go to Tanya. I'll be back to you. Okay. Good deal. All right. Thank you. Okay. Tanya. Hello. Hi. <laughs> well, you grew up in your family. I grew up in my family. Yes. And uh, I learned I have to be tough. So the toughness, you know, I probably have a lot of masculine in me and, and feminine, even though I, I've been trying to heal it for years, I still mm -hmm. think I still, I'm not completely in balance between feminine and uh, masculine. Okay. And while you were talking uh, and yeah, it's it's good you can leave the restaurant, but you cannot leave the work. And you know, like as in at my work, only few people I can share my crazy beliefs with because people think I'm crazy. Some people, but with with uh, most of them, like Alara said, I'm somebody else, and I'm fine with that. You know, I mean, I'm Gemini. I can kind of do do both. Okay, but. I thought to myself, why should I be hiding? Why can't I can't I talk and tell people my beliefs, you know? And uh, so, I mean, I love my I love my work. 
I think people are amazing and they help me heal after my divorce. Uh -huh. But my my beliefs and my ideas would be so wacky for them. So I just don't talk about it. And then I kind of drop into 3D. And yes, I can still be in my heart, but I find myself sometimes in my head. And uh, when I'm aware of it, like conscious, <laughs> I can uh, kind of manage it because then I still choose what to say, what not to say. <laughs> but sometimes I drop into my subconscious and then I am kind of, oh my God, what is coming out of me? Honestly, it is like old me. I'm, no, I'm not judging myself. I'm trying not to judge myself. I'm not impressed. But I thought to think to myself, oh, that's old me coming out. Maybe it should come out. But like in this case, how do I still kind of heal my feminine and masculine and try to be myself? And um, I'm on, I mean, I cannot leave my work. And, and even not my work, my family was always, you know, like I divorced my husband, but I cannot divorce my son. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, he's, okay. he kind of tells me that I am crazy and my thoughts are crazy and all this energy things is crazy and I, I understand that I'm not upset with him anymore because before I used to be like offended and you know now I'm not uh, uh, like I don't have to make him believe what I believe but it's not many people that surround me kind of are on the level of craziness I am <laughs> Well, that's why you joined these calls, so you can oh, listen know. and talk about all this stuff. Okay, Tanya. Well, I think I got yeah. it. It's, it sounds like you want to um, basically bury your old self, integrate with your oh. masculine and feminine, and live from a new place and feel comfortable doing that. Is that right? Yeah, live okay. from a new place and be comfortable with who I am. Okay, good. Okay, good. Great. So we'll... <laughs> So if it's okay with you, I'm going to call that out during our group session. I'm going to call out your name. Absolutely. Names. We'll do that. Is that okay? Because there's some other people who have it. So, you know, because we are mirrors of each other, whenever one person has something, other people have it as well. So if it's okay with you, sure. if we can use that for the group. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thank, and you. Then All right. thank, thank you, Tanya. So I'm going to go ahead and mute you for now. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so, we so got, much I so want to we... say about that, but I'm not going to say anything. So it's like, it's okay. I am going to say it because, you know, it's coming through. Yeah. Um, like, if I'm with people who do not know anything about energy, why would I want to force them to learn about energy? Yeah. If I'm around people who don't know anything about chakras, anything about spirituality, why do I want to force them to know about it? I don't. Well, if they have a question, and they ask me something, I'll share a little bit and then I'll see how they are with it. And then if they ask me more questions, I'll share more. But we're not here to force our opinions on our on our viewpoints on other people. Right? Like I would not want somebody like telling me all their viewpoints about I'm just gonna I don't I don't know, something crazy that that I that I have no desire to know or like anything. And they're like just telling me and I was like I don't want to know like why are you telling me right so um I know other people have mentioned that on these calls as well like they don't they you know they get upset when their kids don't listen to them about their things that they want to share and it's like I don't talk yeah. to the, my kids about these things you know it's like if they want they know what, what I do and they know what I talk about yeah. and all that stuff if they have a question they'll they can come and ask me but I'm not going to force my opinions and viewpoints and perspectives on people i feel i feel free because well, i do the show and i'm able to talk and share my opinions so i guess maybe i have an outlet and maybe you all don't so um i think it's going to be important for you to find you know similar like soul tribe soul family so that you can talk about this stuff but not everybody yeah. is going to be your soul tribe and soul family the people you know like that you work with tanya they you know, maybe they don't want to know about all this stuff, right? It's just an example. But um, when it's their time to learn, they'll reach out and they'll then they'll learn. But, you know, like, I would not let anybody forcing their point of view on me at all. I was like, I didn't ask. 
kind of thing. So I don't know. Think about that. Think about it. But yeah, now they know a lot for sure <laughs> because you've told them a lot. You shared a lot. Um, you know, and then that you know. I'm just saying. Just, just. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna leave it at that. Okay, <laughs> Shivali. I think we have a we have one more question. Yeah, Jan Juanita. Janita. I'm gonna say. Hi, Janita. Oh, Janita. Sorry. No worries. Um, so I have a question about uh my boss or soon to be former boss. I'm in the process of transitioning out of corporate America um, back into my uh, tax and accounting advisory services practice full time. And my boss has, you know, he displays narcissistic behavior. How do I make a difference um, with him in my transition? You know, like I want to have a authentic conversation with him, you know, when I do leave. And I've been flipping that around in my head. Like, how do I impact? How do I impact that effectively? Okay. Okay. So what I what I hear you saying is you're leaving a corporate job and you're going to communicate with your boss. You want to do it as you're going out in an authentic way so that you're not having that imposter syndrome. And um and 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 okay, is that it? That that yes. Okay. yes. Okay, got it. Okay. So would you be okay? Uh, Janita, if we also include what you're talking about, because this theme, we can go with these three themes inside of our meditation, um, because what I basically hear you saying is that you want to be able to communicate effectively from a heart to heart basis and leave other people as well as yourself empowered. Is that right? And heard. And heard. Got it. Empowered and heard. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. All right. So we will just, we will do the process in just a minute. I just, uh, because it's like way beyond the top of the hour, I just want to take a moment and talk about the, the packages. Okay. And then we'll do the process. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yes. Thank you. Is that okay? Okay. Give me one second. Let me share my screen. Um. Okay. So we have three, I think packages here, A, B, and C. They all have a payment plan. And of course, all of them, you can use your gift code as well. So package A, do you want to just share a little bit about uh, what's included? Uh, yes. Um, okay. If you'll just, if you will scroll for me, that will be great. Um, in package A, it includes the masterclass. That's uh, 90 minutes. And in that class, we are going to cover the questions um, about embodiment, embodying your highest self with ease and authenticity. That was what actually Tanya and Janita were talking about. And underneath Bobby's health issues, we could talk about some things because being able to be authentic. Sometimes things are hidden from our view. So we're going to kind of bring up what is hidden in our view and then really create from our heart, tapping into our deepest truth. Creating from the heart doesn't ne just necessarily mean that we're creating a product or service. It means that anything that we do, we're always creating. We are master creators and creatrices. So anything that we say is a creation. Anything we do is a creation. Even our thoughts are a creation. So we're going to talk about some of those things and get into flow with it. Um, get into flow around ease and joy in our lives, right? Like, so creating that as an ongoing reality and then being able to have some clarity around the purpose and vision and knowing what are the steps to take around that purpose and vision for for life. And then um and then sometimes we have to take a you know sometimes we have to take a few steps for a few steps backward to take a few steps forward. So or however that looks, whatever your thought process on that, we're going to go through that. And then do you feel successful in some areas but since that there's a deeper level of alignment and contentment that's calling you. So all of us feel a level of contentment, I'm sure. But there could be the next level that we are wanting to get to. And you can't necessarily create that at the same with the same mindset so we're going to work on our growth mindset so that we can create a few levels up 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'll go through the the root of a, of a of a core limiting belief or emotion, something that holds you back, and something that goes all the way into behaviors that we don't necessarily want. Um, and then we will activate your sacred fire um, for empowerment, unlock your true confidence and visibility. So you really feel that you can be seen, empowering you to step into the spotlight of your life with confidence and purpose, discovering the power to create real happiness, like really understanding what is happiness for you. It's different for everyone. And then harmonizing your body, mind, and spirit, because oftentimes one aspect of us is good with this, but there's another part that is not so great with it. So we want to align our energy centers in order to bring harmony between all of them. So they're all working together and we're happy at every level. And then we're going to connect with uh, higher level beings for guidance. So we'll be partnering with Ascended Masters, with angels and beings of light. Um, and so that's the the 90 minute masterclass, which will be held on the 13th of November at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Awesome. And there's also, yeah, there's also 20 minutes one-on-one clarity call with, Len- with Lanaya. So not part of the uh, group call. This is separately one-on-one. So what is that like for, for somebody? So, so what that is like is that we will literally go to the heart of the matter with one specific issue and we will untangle it so that they feel good about it, so that it is resolved. Awesome. Um, and then also there's going to be a guided meditation download as well. So that's... Yes. Uh, that is also going to help to support them. Yes, that helps to support their heart space, helping them integrate the lessons and the energy. Awesome. So that's package A. And now package B includes the masterclass. Yes. Um, and this also includes a 45-minute one-on-one alignment transmission. So is that like a, 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 like a personal session with you, right? Yes, that's a personal session as well, just like the 20 minute session, but it's clearly longer. And that will allow us to go deeper into something and unravel it. As we know, we're all like layers of an onion. And once we start to peel back things, we can get to the heart of the matter. Awesome. So that's 45 minute session and uh, you still get the bonus guided meditation download as well. So that's 197. And then package C includes the masterclass plus the 45-minute one-on-one session, plus the 20-minute one-on-one session. Uh, And then there's a few bonuses, right? So there's a bonus one is the frequency meditation download, bonus two are journal prompts, bonus three is that guided meditation that we talked about in the other packages, and 31 days of remote healing. Yes. Wow, so there's a lot in this package. (laughs) Yes, there's a lot in that package. That's a that's for somebody who is there. They really want to see a change in a particular area or or, or particular something um, really specific. They want. To, I'm very results oriented, and what can tell you? I'm like, what's the results? And um, so this really goes into something so that we can literally shift it in that period of time, so that you literally um leave leave this container feeling like, okay, I have really seen a difference on this with this with this awesome. so that's package c is 297 and now there's some wonderful testimonials and feedback from people who have worked with lanaya so please do check those out on the page um and then there is a fuller bio for you to check out about lanaya and so again the three packages a b c see which one resonates with you they all have a payment plan and of course if you are an inner circle member please use your gift code as well Awesome. Thank you so much, Lanaya. But wow, package C, there's a lot in there as well. So I love that. So really transformational. So thank you. Welcome. My pleasure. All right. And for those of you who may want, nope, that's not it. Hold on. I was going to say for those of you who want to check out the package now, I'm just going to put it in the, I'm going to put the link in the chat. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, so now we're going to do a process, and this is for everybody, so it's not just the the people that we were talking to earlier, but this is for everyone. Um, is there anything, do we need to have an intention of anything, or are we just open to receiving? You're going to be open to receiving. You're in, I'm going to tell you what, um, you know, I'm going to ask you what to do as we go through it. You can have an intention of releasing something like, 
um, or attaining something like Bobby wants her health back. So she may want to have that intention. Um, and Tanya wants to be her true self. Um, and so she may have that as her, as her intention. Janita wants to be empowered and heard on every plane and aspect. And so she may want to have that intention. So whatever your intention is, you may want to just have that in your mind. So have that intention now. So let me just have you have that intention now. And we're and we're going to go through this process. Um, we're going to go through something first. I've already opened up sacred space. And so we're good. What I want you to feel or envision is the issue that is at hand. So why don't we just all do that right now? Just take a, just take 30 seconds to feel the issue that is at hand, the issue that we are, that we are resolving. Everyone feet flat on the ground and just hands up. And right now we're just, we're just, we're using our thinking minds and we're using our heart just to, to feel into that issue. And I just want you to feel into it right now. Feel what it feels like. And now I want you to take the created state. What does it look like to have this issue resolved? For Bobby, it might look like her, her health is back and she may be up and walking and doing things for herself. And she may be in a new mindset that actually supports the health. For Tanya, she may find herself talking to someone, talking to like-minded people. And so they are resonating with her and she sees herself laughing and talking with them. For Janita, she may see herself empowered and heard in this exit meeting with her boss or with her not her boss, her manager. So she may see that. And for you, whomever, you know, whatever it is for you, see that. Someone may see that a child is back in the fold. Someone may see that they have a deeper level of commitment in a relationship. Someone may see that they have released a certain amount of pounds, whatever it is, see that created state. So you're going to go back and forth right now for a second. You're going to go, you're going to just stay in that created state for a moment. And then we're going to go back to the present state. And when we go back to the present state, I want you to hold your body up. I want you to tighten up your body, tighten up your perineum, tighten up your cheeks, your chin, just, you know, just tighten yourself up and just feel the tightness in your body when you feel that issue. So Bobby will feel the issue around her health and well-being and she'll tighten everything up. Like everything is up. Everything is tightened up. Your perineum, your body, everything is tight. Your teeth, everything is tight. Even maybe your hands are tight. Maybe your toes are even tight. Janina may feel that, that uh, a state of, of, of nervousness or whatever the state is that when she feels about thinking about this situation with the manager and Tanya may feel that situation that she feels how when she's talking to people and she's not comfortable talking and having to be feel like she's in her head and lapsing back into 3D consciousness. And that can even be a situation where you feel like in order to fit in, you have to lapse back into 3D consciousness and then tighten up your body and then release it and go back to the created state. When you go to the created state, I want you to relax your whole entire body and I want you to smile. Relax your whole, this is setting the stage for what we're about to do. Relax your whole entire body and smile. If you move, you may just need to move a little bit to smile. Relax your whole entire body and feel it. And now go back to present state. Tighten everything up again. Feel that situation. See it in your mind's eye. Then put it over to the side. And then release your body. Go back into the created state. What it looks like when you're creating consciously. And what the final situation looks like. And how beautiful and wonderful you feel. Feel yourself being empowered. Feel the feelings. Hear what people are saying about you. Hear what you are saying about yourself. See what people are doing with you. Whether they're interacting with you. Or you're having a great meeting. You're walking out. See what you're saying about yourself. Feel how you're feeling. Your body is not tight now. So you have your freedom to move. Feel that. Okay, I want you to remember it because at the at, at some point during this process, I'm going to call you to do that and you will have light all around you to be able to help facilitate it. So now we're going to go into our process. I just like your feet flat on the floor or if you have your legs up, that's fine. 
hands in receiving, eyes closed. We're gonna go into the heart space. Allow all your guides to come in, feel them coming in now. Feel my guides who are already here. I'm gonna facilitate this healing session today. Oh. Just continue to breathe, breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Now I want you to breathe in for four. You're going to hold for seven, release for eight. Breathe in for four. Hold for seven. Release for eight. Breathe in for four. Hold for seven. Release for eight. Continue to breathe. In God, I live and move and have my being. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever I am, God is. Wherever God is, I am. Wherever you are, God is. Allow your body to continue to relax. Allow any sound that you hear to take you deeper into a relaxing state. Feel the back of your feet relax, whether it's relaxing into the floor, into the ground, whatever you're laying on. Feel the back of your legs relax, the back of your thighs, your lower back, your mid back, your upper back, your shoulders, your head, your neck, your face, your cheeks, your chin, your breast, your arms, your shoulders, your fingers, your waist, your hips, the front of your thighs, your knees, your legs. Relax, relax, relax. Allow the circuit to go back around underneath your body, back to your feet. Feel your feet relaxing deeper, deeper, deeper. Allow them relax into the ground or allow them to relax on any chair or bench you may be laying on, sitting on. Allow the back of your legs to relax, your lower back, your mid back, your upper back, your shoulders, your chest, your chin, your face, your breast, your stomach, your hips, your thighs, your knees, your legs, your feet, allow it all to relax. The divine is expressing through you as you, through me as me. We are only open to that information that is for our highest and best good and the perfect amounts needed for our healing in the here and now. Feel it in the here and now. Allow a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gold light to come down from the great central sun all the way down, 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 down through your entire body, all the way down through the earth, through fire, through air, through water, down, down, down to the bottom of the earth, wrapping around a big crystal at the bottom of the earth. Now bring that back up, bring it back up from Mother Gaia, from Mother Earth, bring it back up from Mother Nature, all of the beauty cleaned up, pristine into your chakras all the way up from your earth star chakra all the way through your entire body through your head going back 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 up to the great central sun and then come back down again let it meet let it come down to your heart pull it back up from mother earth let it meet in your heart send it out from you as if your hands are outstretched two feet from your hands being outstretched like the Vesuvian man or woman. See that beautiful energy going out, 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 cleaned up pristine for the highest and best good for anyone who can receive it. Pull it back in, cleaned up pristine for you. Send it out your back, cleaned up pristine. And then bring it into your hands, to your right hand, all the way to your left hand, all the way out, 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 as far as it can go. Continue to breathe. And then breathe it in from the left side, going through your body, through your heart space, all the way back out to the right side, as far as it can go. Feel it and continue to breathe. When all things that we perceive are of God, what is held in the shadow will be revealed. Nothing is outside of God. As I heal myself, I heal others who come into contact with me. Feel that and know. Feel that and know that everything is a creation that you have created. Your life looks like the way that you have wanted to create it, even if you don't believe that. And it's up to you to believe what you want, take what you want, throw the rest away. 
I want you to feel unconditional love coming into your heart. Feel it growing, growing, growing into your heart. See a beautiful flame. See a beautiful flame, a gold flame in the middle of your heart. See it being joined by a pink flame and then a light blue flame. These three flames are in your heart. See them rotate as if they're going round, 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 either clockwise or counterclockwise, whichever you so choose. It's up to you. See this beautiful heart energy, the threefold flame in your heart. Now bring in, into your heart, that present state. We're going to transmute it. Bring it into your heart so that we can transmute it. Bring it into your heart so that we can transmute it, the present state, however it looks like. Whatever angst you may be feeling, any upset, any disappointment, sadness, whatever it is. And the elements, the trace minerals have asked to be a part of this. Allow them to come in to provide any balance in your body, iron, copper, gold, platinum, silver, trace elements. Allow them to come in to do any work. Allow the directions to come in. Allow the directions to be here. Any directions that had you choose to make a choice, whether you were going north or south or east or west, have them coming in now. Have them come in now to help you transmute whatever it is, knowing that any choice that you made, any decision point that you had, there was a reason why you had it. Allow Christ consciousness to come in, to encircle you, feel the love of Christ, feel the goodness of Christ, the unconditional love, the respect, the admiration for you being a human soul on this planet the combination of divinity, the combination of humanity. Allow that to come in. Feel it in your heart center. <sighs> now you come into your heart. You bring you into your heart, the you that you are now at whatever age you are. And then we're going to go back. And as we go back, we're going to go to a younger version, maybe a 35-year-old version. Bring that, that version into your heart. Then we're going to go back back to a 21 year old version allow that 20 year old version 21 year old version to join you in the heart <sighs> allow the teenager the newly formed teenager maybe she's 13 14 15 she or he allow that teenager to come into your heart feel christ energy all around you as above, so with so below, as within, so without. This is a microcosm of the macrocosm. You are creating your own universe. See yourself inside your heart. See your whole entire body as the universe, as the cosmos, as the entire cosmos, as above, so without, so below, as within, so without. Everything that's in the cosmos is within you. You had to be an elevated being in order to take flight on this earth plane now respect yourself for the level of consciousness that you came into this earth with respect yourself for the fact that you were the one that was able to come up and come out out of your mother in this lifetime everything that happened is for our best and highest good feel that energy feel the whole cosmos all around you you are divine, sovereign, and free. Feel the whole cosmos all around you. You are not a victim. You are free to make choices here. And now I want you to just sit around a table and commune with all of these versions of yourself. The little girl version of yourself, the youngest one, or the little boy, the youngest one, the child of four or five, six. And then the teenager, of 13, 14, 15, and then the person just entering adulthood, 21, then a 35-year-old, and then the person that you are now. You're just communicating right now for the created state, the created state that you will go through in this process. And now bring up on the table, you all are discussing the present state. Everyone's discussing it. There are no feelings involved in it. You're discussing it as if it's not even you, as if it belongs to someone else. It's okay. It doesn't matter. You are exactly where you need to be at this place and time. And then go back to the created state. 
and tell everybody, let everybody around that table, all of the versions of the aspects of you talk about why this created state is going to be optimal for you. Why you're calling this in now. Call it all in, call it all in. And still the threefold flame is going. Feel it, feel the warmth of it. Feel it making the noise that it makes when a flame is burning, crackling. Enjoy it, feel it. And now along with everything that we're doing, whatever it is that you're bringing in, bring in and hold space for divine health, 100% healthy bodies, healthy minds, healthy spirits. And then whisper, hear whisper from your guide about something that may you may be doing that you are not familiar with or that you do not even know about that you may need to delve into more deeply after this session around your own health and well-being. And maybe something for me it is, I get to detox my body of yeast and I get to actually do those things that will help me do that. Whatever it is for you, have your guides whisper it into you. It may need to come from your joy guide. If so, let it come in. And thank Bobby for the opportunity to go into divine healing. And now bring up those versions of you where you feel like you need to act differently. You can be however you need to be wherever you are. You can choose to talk about something or not talk about anything. And you're not attached to how it sounds to anyone else. You are true, truly sovereign, truly divine, truly free. People will take it how they need to take it. You are respectful in yourself. You love yourself so much that you do not get to hide who you are and they get to, to listen or not. And you get to choose who you are sharing with or not. There's no harm here. Now bring in being empowered and heard in every choice and every decision, whenever you need to make or you get to make an authentic conversation with anyone, bring that energy in, that energy that Janita has brought in for the group. And now everyone stand for everyone. Everyone, as we're all one, everyone stand for everyone to get what they need, to get what they have come for and to be able to sustain the healing. And we ask for all of those who are similarly situated, feel the same way. They get to heal these same things that we're asking about. all of them. And now what I want you to see is a burial. However, you need to see a burial of the old self, the present state, the state that no longer resonates with you. We're going to move it out. Now you can see it if it's in a, you can see it as a being in a box and being buried. You can see it going somewhere and disappearing right in front of you. You can see it being burned in the flames, not the heart flames, the flames of St. Germain, the violet flame. You can see it any which way you want it. Anything that you want to put in there, put in there. I may put some enslavement energy in there. I may put some scarcity energy in there. I may put in not sticking to my plan regarding my health and working out, I may put that in there. Whatever it is for you, put it in there. We're burying it, burying it. We're burying it. We're burying it. We're burying it deep, 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 deep in the heart of Mother Earth. She's consented to help us with this visualization, with act this actualization, this healing today. It will all be transmuted. From dust you come, from dust you will be turned. Behold, I make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. Allow it to dissipate. Allow it to go. Now see yourself in the present state. Allow the flames to continue flickering behind you. Allow all the versions and aspects of yourself to help. See you in the present state, the beautiful present state, what you have created, everything that you say that you are manifesting today. 
and whatever is in your blind spot will be shown to you. And now I want you, with the help of this team, you have your angelic team, but you also have your inner child team, your inner self team, your inner teenager, your inner adult. I want you to ask them if it's okay to bring all these particles back to you. Any soul fragments that you have given away, that you let get away because your health got away, any soul fragments that you let get away because you did not allow yourself to be your true self, any soul fragments that you let get away because you were not empowered and heard as a child or as a young adult or as an adult, you're bringing all those particles back. Feel those particles come back. Feel them come back into you. Feel them come back to the you that is there now. While still the flame is going, everything is being transmuted. Bring it all in, 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 in. Allow it to come over you. I'm feeling chills all through my own, whole entire body. Feel it all. Allow it to all come in. <clears throat> Bring it all in. Feel the newness of it. Breathe it in. See it. Breathe it in. See it. Now push that image of the old all the way out, out, out of your field, all the way out, 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 out of the city in which you reside, the state, the county, the county, the state, the country, the continent, push it out. That old way, that old way no longer fits with you. Push it out, push it out, push it out. Now embody the new, embody the new, feel it. Whether you need to sit up stronger, sit up straighter, lay out straighter, whatever it is, feel yourselves accepting it. It's as if it's coming in and embodying you newly right now. Feel it right now. Now see this beautiful present state. See yourself with it being completed. See it in the end state. Bobby would see her health back and she would see herself walking. You're manifesting that. Anyone who has some health issues, see yourself in the end state. Tanya, bring back in, see your true self in the mirror, see yourself as you are, and then see yourself talking to other people. <clears throat> talking to other people, stating your truth and feeling good about it, leaving that conversation, getting in your car and feeling good, and feeling, your, feeling yourself smile. All the way through this, you're smiling now. You're smiling. You're feeling the feelings. You're feeling the feelings now. And Janita would feel this feeling of having talked to this manager and walking out of the office feeling so elated, so happy, so satisfied that she was able to share authentically and be heard. And whatever it is for you, feel it and see it. See it in the end state. See the final situation it's as if it's a frame it's an old, old old movie frame you're skipping to the last frame of that movie see yourself in that old frame and now hear what you're saying about yourself and now feel the feeling that you're feeling all the while smiling 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 you may be smiling so hard that your cheeks hurt now if there's any taste taste it if there's any smell smell it Now step into this picture and touch everything in the picture as you see yourself in that scene. You're touching everything, you're feeling it. You have tactile sensations, you're smelling what is going on. You're hearing the sounds, even hearing yourself saying, good job. You're hearing the sounds that other people are saying to you. You're smelling other people's smells, whatever they are. Maybe it's just incense or maybe it's essential oil, maybe it's perfume, whatever it is, you're doing that. Now, step outside this picture. <sighs> Bring this picture into you. Everyone around the table, the conference room, your group, they're all looking at the t they're all looking at this picture. They're feeling it. They know it's real. They feel it. They have accepted it. There is no part that is saying no to it. They're all in consensus. And together, all of you will take this picture and drop it into your timeline. Your timeline either goes left or right, back to front. Whatever it is, drop it into that timeline. This beautiful picture of you in this beautiful created state. See it. Drop it in tomorrow. Everything.
comes to bear everything. Now bring in all the faith, 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 bring in all the confidence, bring in all the faith, the confidence, knowing that you have created it because you have dominion over this. And it was said that you would do even greater things. This is you. You are sovereign, divine, and free. Feel it. Drop it in. Feel it. Feel everything. Now, be grateful for it happening. Be grateful, knowing that it has already come to pass. Whatever this situation is, feel it, knowing it's already come to pass. Be grateful. Be thankful. Take that picture into your heart. Thank all of your inner children, all of the representations of your internal self and think, feel all your soul fragments continuing to come and flow around you for the next 24 hours, 36 hours, however long it takes around this situation. Allow it to flow, 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 flow. Thank all your guides who showed up for you. I thank all my guides who showed up for me. Now, we are all one and yet I'm giving you all back your energy. I'm taking my energy back, giving your energy to you, taking my energy back to me, giving your energy to you, taking my energy back to me. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Behold, I make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. Come back into the present moment, completely in your body, ready to go about the rest of the day, doing whatever you need to do. Feeling that you've done mighty work for yourself and anyone else similarly situated. Bring it all into your heart center. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes, coming back to the present moment of now. Awesome. How are you all doing? I'm still yawning, um, but I think I'm fully back. Not quite <laughs> getting there. That was powerful. Good. Thank you so much, Lanaya. How is I can't even talk. Let us know how you're doing in the chat. I know it'll take a minute or two for you all to um, be fully present. Bring some water. Drink some water. Definitely, It'll help. Definitely, you definitely want to drink water. You're definitely going to want to drink water for the next 36 hours as you are continually shifting and seeing some light in this issue. I'm going to put my email here. You can email me and let me know how you're doing. I would love to hear. Yes, that was powerful. Oh, my goodness. Whew. Uh, Dorothy says that was incredible. Using all those elements. Linda's a yawning and feeling so warm. Thank you. Yeah, I'm yawning. I'm not warm, but I'm not cold. So <laughs> amazing meditation. Karen says, I love seeing all the younger selves in this healing. Yeah, there was like oh, so many pieces to this uh, to this process, right? Yes. Yes. There were, <clears throat> and it, it wasn't what I had planned on doing, but that's, they just came in and told me what to do. So, so I hope yeah, that exactly. <laughs> that's, that's definitely how it happens. Tanya says, I released something. Awesome. awesome. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. And then I guess um, the next 24 to 36 hours, stuff is still happening. Yes. The next 24 to 36 hours, you want to drink a lot of water. You want to ground as much as you can. Feet flat on the ground if you can. Um, sometimes I put some essential oil on my feet just in case, you know, there are insects and things of that nature. Things like to get in our feet. So I protect myself. So do that. Um, if you can, um, you, you're you going to want to take a shower or, or bath and really ground yourself and, and let the energies come and go. And you may go into a very, very deep sleep when you sleep tonight or whenever you go to sleep. Mm. Good. <laughs> uh, Nora says that was a beautiful experience. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, L Lanaya and Shali. Such uh, lovely. I'm gonna say love shared. Here was all of you. Thank you. Should we repeat this? Linda saying you can. I would choose a different topic. Like right, something else. Yes, I would. I would choose something else. Yeah, I would choose something else. Um, to repeat, and I wouldn't do it at least for the next thirty six hours. I would. I would wait. I would wait. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. Uh, Diane says, thank you. That was a beautiful process, feeling relaxed and at peace. Uh, Lansing says, thank you, Linnea. Definitely a release during this new moon. Awesome. Yep, good. 
beautiful process, Amanda says. Yeah, that was that was so yeah, for the next twenty four to thirty six hours, don't do it again. But after that, definitely go do it again and use a different uh experience or different thing you want to create, right? Yeah. Yes. Like it Absolutely. That's why we put in the faith. So know that know that everything has been done. Yet you asked, have faith. Yeah. I'm you. I'm still yawning. Like <laughs> so it's like it's still, you know, uh going how do we access it again it's going to be on youtube i'm going to send out an email a little bit later it'll be in the email as well it'll be on youtube it'll be on spotify i usually post it also all over social media as well and if you're in the inner circle group and all that so everywhere <laughs> you won't miss it um yeah wow so powerful for sure thank you so much lanaya you're welcome. You're welcome. My pleasure. My pleasure. I hope everyone enjoyed it. And yes, can't wait to see everything that comes up. So let me Ooh. know. The email is in the chat. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> Miracles abound. Any any last words of wisdom before we go? Because like, oh my goodness, I could fall asleep right now, which it's only five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, last words would just be that um, to realize the beauty of who you are right? Like you are, and you are here for a purpose and you're so beautiful. I mean, and I just, this is an honor and a privilege to share what, you know, God has given me and everyone has beautiful talents. And I just, I'm just so honored to be able to share this with you all today. And so I just look forward to, um, I just look forward to miracle reports. I love that. I'm looking forward to miracle reports. Good. Awesome. So the intention is being held that miracles are happening, right? Yes. So beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. So we will definitely have to have you come back on again because this was such a powerful call as well as the powerful process, right? So uh, both. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for all your comments and questions and feedback in the chat as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so oh, my much. goodness. Yeah, this was quite... Uh, quite the show so please do watch again listen again do the process again for a different outcome okay a different result different outcome something else not the same yes. thing because whatever we chose ha has happened <laughs> so it's, that's done it's done. Okay? it's done it's done exactly yeah. um all right so what, what day is it today thursday so again happy halloween for all of you celebrating be safe out there Happy Diwali, everyone. Wishing you so much love and light and blessings always. So um, this is Thursday, so we'll see you next week. For those of you in the inner circle, uh, our community call normally is on Mondays, but uh, I think it's going to be on Tuesdays from now on at 5 p.m. Eastern, I think. I haven't quite confirmed it yet, but I think that's what it, it will be from now on. So anyways, ah, have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. Go back and watch any of the videos again um the one i did yesterday it was uh what was it about heart walls <laughs> clearing heart walls or something like that right so go back and watch that as well right so thank you so much everyone until next time may you continue to be blessed with an abundance of joy peace love happiness prosperity and radiant health sending you all so much love and blessings always bye yeah. for now bye. thank you thank you so much bye 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 everyone <laughs> and drink water ground the best you can, okay? <laughs> Bye.